this is what everybody thinks of when you hear about artificial intelligence. We think that it knows everything about us, that it threatens us, that it can replace the human mind as the driver of civilization. But today, all artificial intelligence can do is scale our ignorance. <laughs> Let me give an example. It's 2006, and I'm the head of derivatives at a major bank, and I know what drives mortgage defaults. It's income level, it's credit score, it's the mortgage to property value ratio, and unemployment in the metro area. I know this so well that I bring in some data scientists, I give them this data from a bunch of historical loans, and they go off and tune models that are 97% accurate in predicting mortgage defaults. I'm able to bundle these up into larger securities and sell them widely, and the buyers know they're going to make money on these because of those models. I think we all know how this ended. <laughs> now, what I just described is what's used for everything, pretty much, that you hear of as artificial intelligence or machine learning or data science. It's called supervised learning, because before the computer can do anything, humans tell it what to do. They put in bias or their own assumptions before the AI does anything. And that means the AI spits out wrong or biased information, but a million times over. That's how AI scales our ignorance. That doesn't make the world a better place. If we want to push the world forward, we need something different. And that's why my team created something completely different. An AI that's focused on coming up with new ideas and helping people. Instead of supervised, we went unsupervised. Now, before you get worried about unsupervised as a word, it doesn't mean we're building the machines that are going to run amok or something like that. It's a different approach to artificial intelligence. In unsupervised learning, the machine starts from the data. So there's no opportunity for humans to layer in their biases or their mistakes at the start. And what comes out is patterns that people can look at. And the reason that's so important is that those patterns are where human ideas come from. Let's take a hypothetical example from the world of entertainment. So let's say we are all part of the editorial committee for a book uh, publisher. And we're trying to come up with the next series we're going to publish. We can feed the AI information on all the books that have pub been published so far, on their synopses, their reviews, their settings, all those types of things, as well as their sales numbers. The AI can go over all of that and find the patterns that matter. Things like there's half a million people who read books where the lead is female, the setting is more than 20, but less than 70 years in the past. And the reviews contain the phrase, deep characters. And there's another million people who read primarily supernatural horror books or th spy thrillers that are between 208 and 258 pages in length. And they mostly read on their mobile phones. Now, as you look at these, I want you to note what you're doing. You're probably coming up with concepts of books that would be good for these audiences. You're coming up with ideas. That's what people are great at, taking a pattern like this and coming up with ideas of what to do with it. The AI that can find patterns to make people do that is real. We're using it in many companies and industries today. In fact, we're working with Disney Music Group, Disney Channel, and exploring opportunities with ESPN and others to find these types of patterns and ideas in their businesses and help them create the future of entertainment. And that's the future I want to see. Not a future where we're focused on machines threatening or replacing humans, but a future where we're getting the best of people and machines. Because people are brilliant. They can take these patterns, be they in science, in entertainment, in business, in anything, and come up with so many creative ideas of what to do with those. But they will never be able to go through all the data that's needed to find this. And what that means is that there's a limit to what we can ever do with supervised AI. We need to go unsupervised. And when we do that well, when we have unsupervised AI going over all of our data and putting these patterns in front of people, we empower those people to be brilliant. Thank you.